I mean, you know, whatever I do, I make national news. When I put people in pink underwear, I always make national news. But this one, they don't want to talk to the sheriff. Detected radiation levels of 70 sieverts an hour will kill a human after seven minutes of exposure and are ten times higher than experts had been hoping. Levels are even higher in reactors one and three. Anybody with common sense looking would say, wait a minute, you know, we better get another system going to make sure this doesn't happen again. So it's only common sense. Technicians have done something they haven't done since the accident last March at Fukushima Daiichi. They measured radiation inside the number two reactor. They found the levels were extremely high. Technicians with Tokyo Electric Power Company placed a dosimeter inside the reactor's containment vessel. They say radiation levels increased as they lowered the instrument. This suggests nuclear fuel melted down and collected at the bottom of the vessel. The dosimeter registered a maximum of 72.9 sieverts per hour. A person exposed to those levels would die within about seven minutes. The technicians also learned that the water used to cool the reactor is only 60 centimeters deep. They thought the level was about three meters. TEPCO officials suspect the suppression chamber at the bottom of the vessel may have been destroyed. But there's a lot of politics involved. People don't want to even talk about it. A nuclear expert says the new findings at the number two reactor may slow down the work to decommission the Fukushima Daiichi plant. It's like the plague to talk about this. Masanori Naito says TEPCO's next job is to find out where the water leakage is occurring. The utility will have to develop radiation-resistant cameras and new robots. Everybody wants to ignore this subject. It is going to be a hard task to find the damaged parts that are causing water leakage in the containment vessel. That's because the vessel has a large surface area. Uh, and uh, most of the questions in that press conference on March 1 wasn't about the evidence. They didn't want to talk about that. Contamination from the Fukushima accident may force fishermen in a neighboring prefecture to suspend the catches of one of their favored species. Catches of Japanese sea bass may become the first marine products of Miyagi Prefecture north of Fukushima to be suspended. Contamination of up to 360 becquerels of radioactive cesium per kilogram has been detected in sea bass hauls over the past two months off the coast of Miyagi. The levels exceed the stricter government limits that will begin next month. The new maximum allowable levels will be 100 becquerels per kilogram. Miyagi Prefecture and fisheries cooperatives are considering asking fishers in the prefecture to voluntarily refrain from catching the fish. It's all this has been already done, you know, this is old stuff. Why don't they talk about the evidence? Nobody's talking about the evidence. Japanese scientists are cautious about possible earthquakes near the country's nuclear plants. They say many faults have become more active since last year's massive quake and there's a risk they could shift simultaneously, triggering bigger earthquakes. Japan's nuclear safety agency has asked the operators of six plants to re-examine the active faults near their facilities. And there seems to be a, a national blackout on this. The agency's expert panel has been studying the possibility of faults more than five kilometers apart becoming active at the same time. The phenomenon had been considered unlikely until the March 11th disaster. Three of the nuclear power plants, Mihama, Tsuruga, and Monju, lie in Fukui Prefecture. The panel points to the possibility of simultaneous fault activity damaging the plants. The agency has also requested reviews of three other facilities in Niigata, Ishikawa, and Shimane Prefecture, all along the Sea of Japan. Panel members and seismic engineer Tsuyoshi Takada cautions prudence. There is no absolute safety guarantee with nuclear power. The government and power companies should explain the exact circumstances to local residents. Results of the reassessment phase could force a revision of quake resistance standards at the plants. They could also affect the design of stress tests required for restarting currently idle plants since everybody else seems to avoid the issue. 
Officials in Fukushima Prefecture are set to pay cash to residents for the emotional distress caused by the accident. The payments will go to people in municipalities farther away from the plant who are not eligible for full compensation from TEPCO. The officials say they'll pay about $2,400 each to pregnant women and children aged 18 and younger. Those payments would cover people in the western part of the prefecture. They'll pay about $1,200 to expectant mothers and children in southern prefecture, or rather southern Fukushima. TEPCO has promised to pay those people about $2,400 each. Prefectural officials say they'll also pay about $480 to everyone else in western and southern Fukushima. Twenty eight, two thousand and twelve. It keeps on going. 